Hey guys, in the MTG Finance Realm, Rudy Chan has, there are a lot of strong opinions about him. This was posted a day ago in MTG Finance Reddit. Rudy, some people hate him, some people love him, but was just curious what the current state of affairs. He posted his depressing video last week and very quickly removed it. I know it probably had to do with the fab comments towards the end, but it looks like he pushed out what he had filmed in the queue and stopped uploading. Uh, he actually uploaded today as a recording of this video, so this is not true. He himself mentions his patrons were dropping left and right, and at the same time is pumping his t-shirt sales. Was generally curious if anyone knew chairs. You're getting rootied as we speak. Yep. Uh, there's another guy, he's sitting in jail right now, called Anthony Farrar, that I cover on my Lust channel, L-U-S, and occasionally he would do, quote, a blackout, a social media blackout, and that would inc increase his engagements later on. He was riding high in 2021 at peak TCG prices. His paper net worth must have took a pretty big hit. When you lose large percent of net worth, even if your living condition don't change, it stresses people out. I'm pretty sure he is doing perfectly fine. I imagine he's a few mil in collectibles and then a few more million in traditional investments. He can just legally manipulate the card market so it's easier for him to clear large percent returns fast. Yeah, his portfolio is probably all weather proven. He said he has about 20 million in collectibles and more in our real estate and stock market and a little bit for him of Bitcoin and ETH. As far as I understand, he is around or close to the nine figure range. I'll be honest, without ever having seen his books, I won't really take what he says at face value. He is a showman. I absolutely think he is wealthy. I have no idea his positions, nor do I care. He has said a lot of things a lot of times. He has done several videos in detail showing his business's rental property he owns, how to set it all up, showing his certificates from when he was an advisor, several million dollars in magic cards, mostly sealed, I would add. This is me adding to it. I mean, it's really easy to fake sealed cards, guys. I mean, pay money while we can't tell the difference. Uh, video games, art, sealed boxes, his online store has thousands of sales with a vast inventory of old school magic to current. Shows vehicles. I, doesn't he drive like a Nissan Titan? Shown pallets of cards being dropped off. Where defense of Rudy? He is absolutely a showman. He is one of the original MTG influencers. This is true and crazy. Like, you know, you are going to be fine no matter what. But now I can't get another Lambo, so I'm going to be depressed. Um, Lambos. I mean, Ben is proposing an uptick next year that we will not see reserve list prices this low again, referring to duels and played reserve lists. There's a trend over the years in re reserve list movement. Some are ridiculous like Mox Diamond. The magic is less than 20% of what Rudy owns, you silly silly. Rudy is going to eat during this bear market. Folks, folks, you got it all wrong. You know how I know? You're all Timmy's flipping tacos on a Tuesday night while I do your, nah, I can't say that. Serious. Rudy wanted to sell below minimal price that LSS Fab had placed for all official sellers of their product. Argument is that... If you, Rudy's client, are being charged a subscription and you have to pay the same price that you find at other stores, it's not really worth it having a subscription. He did mention he will continue doing releases though and hope to continue the relationship so he can keep offering a form of value to his clients. The t-shirts he does once, one every year and promotes the new ones each year. I'm not going to feel bad for someone who owns more reserve list cards and sealed boxes than anyone else in the world. If the man ever needed income, he could sell 10% of what he owns and live without a care for many years. He also comes across as a pretentious asshole. 
He has a local game store, owns multiple restaurants, and has side hustles. You'd think he doesn't have multiple income streams? So he should double not care then. People like that care about every little thing when it comes to making money because that's how they got to where they are in the first place. By starting out on third base with rich parents, the majority of successful entrepreneurs come from wealth, millionaire parents. Those are the people who can afford risk. This is capitalism. Does he still have a local game store? It was my understanding that he closed his storefront to be public years ago. Uh, and they're talking about FAB and LSS. I'm going to avoid that. The FAB people have really done a good job. Oh, here's one. Rudy charged close to $1,000 for two boxes of Monarch first edition. $96 MSRP per box. A playmat and a promo token. He pumped the shit out of that product, and anyone who didn't immediately flip it to another sucker got stuck holding the bags. Rudy made an absolute killing during the era, hyping that ever-loving shit out of a product he knew he wouldn't hold. LSS wasn't shy about wanting to expand print runs and organize play to have people playing limited and having reasonable access to cards. Fab 2.0 came about in part to make market practices of people like Rudy the man influence how the company operates personally I don't mind Rudy he's a con man but he's entertaining and decently transparent even if his patrons are too blind to see it do you have any sources for your claims people who hate Rudy always make large claims about him so forgive me if I don't take you at face value uh, here are some claims here and then uh, the person this is a bunch of sources, right? Uh, you have a source. MSRP was $96. He paid less than $7 a box and sold at more than five times. It's pretty clear that you aren't familiar with the game and that's okay. No, you don't. You were clearly implying he was selling them at an unreasonable price, but they were only marked at 80% market value, then they were not overpriced. No one is asked about MSRP. I asked about market value. Market can be unreasonably priced. Yeah, this is a conversation between two people who have no game, no skin in the game. I saw a video on his and how he pushed MetaZoo to patrons and they lost a fortune buying it up based on his hype. That can't go well for good image either. You can only sell garbage to people for so long before they realize they are just giving money away. If you don't understand MetaZoo is hot trash when you see it, I don't know what to tell you. It has no track record and the art literally looks like it came from third graders notebook. You're correct, but the shame is on Rudy for hawking that piece of shit and saying for years at this point that it's a good buy. It's propped up by Steve Aoki and there's no actual game involved. <laughs> it gets uh, worse than that.